In this video, I'm going to do an example of something called the ornstein uhlenbeck process. Uh, what this is, is a stochastic differential equation, actually. Uh, it's this equation. So we're specifying here that an Ito diffusion xt is to have drift, which is minus itself, and speed 1. So what does this mean? Let's, let's just draw a sketch of the way we expect the solution of this equation to behave. It means that it uh, starts somewhere, it does the usual Ito diffusion thing of randomly wandering around on a jagged path. Um, but what it's doing is, whenever it's got a positive value, its drift is negative. So it's drifting back towards a value of zero. It's not to say it will get there, but let's say it does. And then whenever it's got a negative value, its drift is positive, so it's again drifting back towards zero. So as compared to just a Brownian motion, um, and that's what you should do, you should compare this xt to just the Brownian motion wt. Um, they both have the same speed always, speed 1, so the, the local variance of their little changes is about the same. But the key difference is that where the Brownian motion has zero drift, so it's not going anywhere in particular, um, the ornstein uhlenbeck process is always drifting back towards zero. It is uh, a mean reverting process. The mean of xt being zero for every t, or, or at least it is if you start at zero. And it's always reverting back to that, that zero mean that it wants to have. So what we're going to do now is solve this stochastic differential equation. Uh, we're, we're going to find a process that we can write down explicitly that is the solution. And as with other kinds of differential equations, it's not enough just to write down the equation. You usually have to specify an initial value. That is, you have to say where the process starts. So what should x0 be? I'll call it just lowercase x0. That's the specified starting value. And we'll take that to be just a number. So it's not a random variable or anything. You, you always just start in a fixed place. All right, how are we going to solve this uh, stochastic differential equation? Uh, we're going to solve it by the time-honored method of knowing the answer already, so that you just have to substitute it back into the equation and verify that it satisfies it. Very common method of solving differential equations. So here's what the solution actually is. written down there in, in the form of a stochastic integral involving the Brownian motion W. Now, the first thing to notice about this is that this is one of these situations I was warning you about, where we're trying to deal with something that looks like it's kind of a function of a Brownian motion, but that doesn't mean you can apply Ito's lemma to it, uh, because this is not just a function of WT. Uh, because it's an integral, it involves other values of W as well. In fact, it involves all of the values that the W process has from 0 to t. So it's not just a function of t and wt. So Ito's lemma does not directly apply. However, we can get around that if we do something else as well. What we're going to do is introduce another process y, which will be the stochastic integral part. Like so. What does that mean, actually? If y is a stochastic integral, what is it? It's an Ito diffusion. with 
becomes its description. dyt is e to the t dwt. That is, its drift is 0 and its speed is e to the t. That this is just the differential way of writing this statement. Remember from when I introduced stochastic integral, I said, you know, if you have a stochastic integral from 0 to t, well, that defines a process, a function of t, um, and that process is itself an Ito diffusion, and its drift and speed can be obtained like this, or, yeah. So what's the use of y? Well, then the, the solution that we're working with, or the claimed solution, can be written in terms of y. y is the stochastic integral, so that's quite an important part of it. It can be written like this, where the g actually is just a function. To make it fit, g of ty would have to be Okay, so if you take that function and you plug in for y this expression, then you get what we claimed the solution was. So this is something to which Ito's lemma applies. Uh, g really is just a function. So we can go with that. Let's work out the partial derivatives. Just get them written down so, so we don't confuse ourselves. Um, the partial derivative with respect to t partial derivative with respect to y, I'll call it g sub y because the variable is called y, and the double partial derivative with respect to y, um, well now we have to differentiate this again with respect to y, but it's got no y in it, so that's zero. So we won't have to worry about that um, term that involves the second derivative. Okay, now let's use Ito's lemma. We're applying Ito's lemma to this. xt is this function of yt. So Ito's lemma will tell us that dxt is gt dt plus gy dyt, and we don't have to worry about the second derivative term. Again, I'm writing g sub t by itself, as I've been doing all along, and it's understood that you're supposed to substitute in the random variable here. So where I write g t, that is actually that. So for the y, I have to substitute in the actual random variable, capital Y t. And for the other one, the g sub y, well, that's just e to the minus t dyt. Okay, and dyt, well, we can substitute in for what that is from over here. dyt is e to the t dwt. I'm sorry, I left out a minus sign when I was doing this. The first term should have a minus sign in it. And now what have we got left? Well, <clears throat> this whole thing is just minus xt. So we've got that. And these two things cancel out, so we're just left with 1 times dwt. So dxt is that, which means our... Um, process that we've constructed, this xt satisfies the differential equation. So th that's verified that uh, our claimed solution really is a solution of the stochastic differential equation. 
So that, this is now an explicit representation of the ornstein uhlenbeck process. This is what it actually looks like. Um, at time t, it's still got some influence from the starting value, but that decays over time because of the e to the minus t. And what it gradually becomes more influenced by is what all the fluctuations of the driving Brownian motion have been doing via this stochastic integral. And if you look closely at how this integral works, you'll see that fluctuations that were made longer ago, that is when s was closer to 0 than to t, um, have less influence because of this term. The fluctuations that are most important are, are the most recent ones when s was nearly as much as t.